people would probably get more violent. This, for me, is just a symbol of them protecting what they hold sovereign, but at the same time, as my sign says, justice and liberty for all, and that's in the Pledge of Allegiance. And if it is truly justice and liberty for all, it doesn't only apply to, to people with power. Well, it, as we've seen it, uh, people have been uh, saying and posting, you know, uh, the incident with George Floyd, the, that happened in Minneapolis. What does that have to do with Utah? What do you say to that? What's your answer? I feel like it just, it's not an um, isolated incident. It's a, it's a representation of, of things that go on constantly that we never hear about. And if we do hear about them, it's just shoved under the rug. And if it is taken seriously, we're starting to take it seriously now. I heard on the news recently is the cop who did this is now in custody. Why does it take so much of us to stand up for that to be done? That should be done in the first place. It shouldn't take all these people to do this. But when it comes to it, we have the right to do so. Do you feel that sometimes law enforcement can get away with things that maybe we can't? Is that, is that one one hundred percent? Because I mean, anyone with power we see throughout history, anyone with power will abuse it. But at, at the same time, myself in my personal life, I've seen help from law enforcement. I feel safe. My parents are immigrants. You come to America knowing that you have a certain level of protection that you won't enjoy anywhere else. One hundred percent. I feel like there's a check and balance that needs to be done, right? Like I also, I do believe, and I've been, I've had my own contact, not legally, but I have had my own contact with law enforcement through friends. And the stories that they've told me, they've been very kind, they've been very understanding. But then it's opposite as well. Like we're all human beings, right? But when it comes to, this is all a symbol. It's not just about one incident. It's about the systematic oppression and the racism and the bigotry and the sex and like everything, the sexism, everything that's been gone for so long. People want justice. People want justice, justice, and liberty for all. Thank you so oh, much, you say. And so uh, the water bottles of throwing has seemed to, well, there it goes back. I, I don't know if you guys can still hear me. I don't know if we're still on air. But this is what we're seeing right now on the steps of the Capitol. Uh, Utah Highway Patrol, more coming down, more officers uh, to kind of stand, uh, hold that line there. We saw screaming uh, moments ago where people were just kind of getting in their faces, but no reaction uh, from law enforcement from Utah Highway Patrol. There's more officers that are also on the middle portion of those steps. As you can see there, they are standing, they are holding their ground, but, but allowing the group to protest, and some of them are choosing uh, to take uh, violence, I would call it. There goes another water bottle. Certainly an unfortunate incident there because uh, those UHP troopers are simply just doing their job. They're just trying to keep those protesters out of the state capitol. Uh, let's go live now to the head of the Salt Lake NAACP, Janana Williams, who joins us on the phone. As you're watching this unfold, I think we can all accept the anger and accept the protesting that's happening across this country right now. It's the violence that's difficult to digest. Yes, yes, we, we can. And it's, it's okay that they're having a demonstration, but we would ask that people do it in a peaceful manner. Uh, no vandalism, no burning cars, no burning uh, businesses. And we want to make sure that, that people adhere to those type of things. So, Janetta, what would your message be to the folks out there um, at, at this time, at this hour, and what, what are you experiencing personally as far as, you know, just some of your feelings of what's happening across the country? Well, I can understand what's going on and the, the feelings of um, desperate, you might want to say, but what it is is that uh, people have looked and seen the Eric Garner before in New York, and then uh, now this with George Floyd, and then our week or so ago, the uh, rundown and murdering of a young jogger, um, Mr. Avery Avery. But what we want to say, say to people is that, uh, yes, you can do the demonstration, you can do peaceful uh, demonstrations, but again, as I said, uh, stop the, um, the, 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 the vandalism that's going on, stop all of the um, negative things that are happening, setting police cars on fire, uh, those type of things. And so if you're going to have a, a, a protest or you're going to talk about what's going on in the country, then talk about that and stop trying to incite a riot. And that's what's been going on. Janetta, what kind of conversations do we need to have as a society, oh not just today, but tomorrow, next month, six months, a year from now? I, I would say that if folks want to, uh, if they want to be involved in different things going on in the community, don't just wait until something like this happens. But be involved all the time. 
don't wait and say, I'm going to go down and have this uh, protest and join in it, all these people because there's a large group of people. Well, I'm saying to those folks, make sure you go to the polls or even go to register first because you can do that online. You can vote by mail. But you can do all of these types of things. But you can get involved in doing things uh, on a local level with different groups and with the NAACP. Uh, we're a nonpartisan organization. Uh, we are making sure that people go to the polls and vote. So I would say to those folks, you know, if you're that mad, you're that angry about anything whatsoever, and you're mad about the killings that are going on toward African American men and women, then do something about it, but don't go out and do a demonstration protest where you're vandalizing property of other people. You know, if you're going to vandalize something, then, you know, go tear up your own house. You know, you can do have to be able to do that, fix it back up when you get through with that. But, but, but stop all of the vandalism and stop all of the insightful uh, people are going out inciting these different things. And so that's, those are the things that we do not condone at all. Okay, thank you very much. Janetta Williams with the NAACP in Salt Lake City right here. Thank you for joining us, and we appreciate your words calling for peace as far as, uh, you know, when it comes to vandalism, those kind of things, we need to back up. So it looks like, uh, apparently, thank you so much, Jeanette. We're gonna go, Jeanette, we're gonna go back out live yeah. at the scene here. We can see from uh, Chopper 5 right now, apparently an armed vehicle. We are seeing some officers now in riot gear that are close by the um, police car that's been burned out. I'm not sure if our Alex Cabrera is still at that location or not. Are you still there, Alex? Or you're, you may be making your way over to that 7-Eleven, not sure. Okay, we don't have Alex at this point, but what you're looking at right now, a live situation at the corner of 400 South and 200 East, this is where um, the protesters lit up the police car on fire. You do have officers now in riot gear. You also have an armed vehicle that's come out and they may be making their way to get people kind of to back off a little bit. We did hear from former chief uh, Chris Burbank a little bit about the tactics behind the scenes and how officers want to not, you know, incite more anger or frustration. And so usually the right gear doesn't come out right away unless somebody is being hurt or injured or anything like that. No, you made a really good point that you needed to, to begin with the conversation and, um, we haven't seen that conversation take place, at least not today. Uh, we've, we've seen this police car that was just uh, set on fire, set on fire by a few of the, the many who came out to peacefully protest. And you're seeing the response in this police gear because of those few. Um, we're, we also saw all the windows and the track stations as they were uh, being um, uh, broken out by skateboards and pieces of wood and, and, and other paraphernalia. And now you're seeing here to the left of your screen the state capitol where UHP troopers standing there and non-defensive, just trying to keep, keep people outside of the state capitol. But it's a very different scene there on the right-hand side. Let's go ahead and get over to Jet Bull. Is he still on uh, the line there? Maybe, Jet, you can kind of give us your perspective. You're at the capitol. You're a little ways away from the crowd. Um, anything that you've seen or observed from your situation? Yeah, we have, Dan. Uh, in the last 10 minutes or so, some people in the crowd have been lobbing water bottles at the state troopers. I'll let Adam uh, zoom in closer on that shot. As you can see, the crowd size really hasn't changed much in the last half hour or so. Um, there are about as many people arriving as there are now leaving. Um, it's, it's hard for us to get a real read on how many people are up on that platform right in front of the Capitol staff. But I think right in that plaza area, uh, there could be 500 people. I don't know. It's hard to estimate from our vantage point. But as you can see, uh, there are about 20 state troopers on the steps there. Uh, and every handful of minutes in the last 10 minutes or so, uh, a few water bottles have been lobbed up there. Uh, but they still continue to take a non-aggressive type of stance up there. Uh, as you can see, aside from the lobbing of those bottles, they're also uh, chanting uh, the left green, uh, some other chants that they've, that they've also summed up in the last, the last half hour or so. Uh, right now, uh, kind of quiet, we can't exactly hear what's going on up there. And there's still a lot of traffic around the Capitol right now. Still a lot 
lot of cars driving up. Uh, I think some people are looking for parking places. Uh, other people are leaving this area. But as you know, um, those streets around the Capitol can get congested very quickly. Uh, and that's what's going on right now, uh, especially with, the, with State Street headed up to the Capitol. Uh, that intersection right at the base of the Capitol is, is, really quite, is, is really quite congested right now. People have Some motorcycles that were up here on the sidewalk earlier. Uh, they seem to have left. Uh, there's a lot more chanting going on right now. Um, but from our perspective, um, that's what we can see.